Have you ever watched Waterloo? Holy duck, that's just doing one battle. I'm sorry, Sergei Bondarchuk. You've got to be very careful in battle films that you understand what's going on. Otherwise they very quickly wear out and get boring. I don't care how majestic it is. I don't care how many uniforms you got. It gets boring. We'll come to superheroes after this if you want, because I'll crush it. I'll ducking crush it. They're ducking boring as sh- Oh. Mm -mm. Okay, Mr. Scott. The Last Duel by Ridley Scott has a lot to recommend it. It's got a very cool sword fight, probably the coolest sword fight I've seen in recent time. It's got um, a lot of interesting historical details, which I appreciated as a history enthusiast, but it had two really big problems, in my opinion, and um, they kind of overshadowed everything else. In fact, this is one of the scripts I wrote before deciding to change how I do YouTube, and I've had some time to think about it. It's aging, the, the last duel is aging poorly in my mind, shall we say. By the way, I'm going full spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, you've been warned. My critique comes mainly down to two things. One of them is just um, an aspect of how the movie um, is structured. I think it's too long, we'll get to that. And the, the second one is a, of a historical nature, how it represents the historical uh, people, how it represents the people uh, in it, who were real once upon a time. So first, how it works just as a piece of cinema. As a preamble, I personally like long stories. I like long books. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be reading The Wheel of Time. Um, I've always liked long movies. You know, those old three and four hour epics uh, are some of my favorite. Uh, there were some of my favorite films growing up, and I still enjoy watching them. But The Last Duel is a rare example of a movie that, in my opinion, is too long. The, the movie utilizes something known as the Rashomon Effect. Uh, Rashomon is a movie by Akira Kurosawa from 1950. The Rashomon effect is when there are multiple narratives from multiple point of views and uh, points of view, bleh, from multiple points of view, and we, ha we as the audience don't know who's telling the truth or who's lying, and maybe it's confirmed near the end of the story, or maybe it's just left ambiguous. It depends on the film. But I think the movie is too long because it doesn't use the Rashomon effect particularly well. In fact, it only uses the Rashomon effect for the first hour or something, because the first two segments from uh, the perspective of the men, Carouge and Legree, they, uh, Degree, sorry, are very different. We don't know who's telling the truth, and some of the differences are pretty big. Um, some of them are kind of small. Some of them don't even really contradict um, each other. Like the opening battle sequence, some of that definitely could have happened the way both of them remember, and other parts of it couldn't, so it's a mixed bag. That, that's fine, that's Rashomon effect. However, the minute the third chapter starts, uh, Marguerite's perspective, a little subtitle appears on the screen saying the truth. Well, once we're told that what we're about to see is the truth, this is no longer the Rashomon effect. And if we're getting the true story, why did we get the first two segments? What purpose do they serve? Now, the obvious argument in favor of the film, just as it is, is that by getting those first two segments with Carouge and Degree, we get to see how skewered their points of view are. But I would argue that the third section, Marguerite's section, The Truth, makes it really obvious that both of them are not in touch with her feelings on the matter, in the case of uh, Carouge, or um, are viewing reality realistically, in the case of Degree. We don't even need those first two sections to make that clear. It's obvious from the way Carouge talks, from the way Degree talks, that they don't see anything wrong with their actions, but with looking at it with our modern sensibilities, very little that they do is okay. So, and that's clear in the third section, which is the truth. So, there's no subtlety in the, the movie's messaging, and the first two sections are kind of just wasting our time, in my opinion. 
Now, to really illustrate what I mean, I'd like to do my favorite thing, which is compare. Uh, I'm not going to compare this movie to Rashomon because uh, you probably haven't seen it, and if you haven't, you should, without spoilers. So, I'm going to use an episode of the um, TV sitcom from the 70s, All in the Family. In the third season, there was an episode called Everyone Tells the Truth, which, uses, which used the Rashomon effect. In this episode, uh, three of the characters recall the same event, and we see two very different versions, and then we get a third version, which is more sort of balanced, and then we get a piece of evidence at the end showing us which version was true. But until the very end of the episode, we can't be 100% sure of who was telling the truth, and it's a very simple version of the Rashomon effect, but it does illustrate a way to do it. But now to compare this with The Last Duel, the three versions aren't really that different, and especially chapters two and three. Like, sure, we sure Degree's story has some little changes, but I mean, as far as our modern sensibilities are concerned, he took advantage. I'm not going to say the R word on YouTube because I've heard it can get you in trouble. Jacques took advantage of Marguerite, no matter how you slice this, and uh, so. If, on the other hand, let's imagine a different version of this movie. If, on the other hand, we have the three characters, we've got Marguerite, Degree, and Carouge, let's imagine instead that they, I don't know, uh, Carouge gets the story from his wife, and uh, he tells his version of it to someone else, maybe his lawyer or something, and Degree tells his version of the story to his lawyer. And in Degree's version of the story, it could be radically different. He could outright lie and say that nothing happened at all, which I believe is what the real Degree said. Well then, until the end of the movie, we, as the viewer, we'd be free to speculate on, what, on who is telling the truth. We wouldn't know any more than the people at the time did, except, of course, the participants. They knew, clearly. Um, or we, could have it, we could have the truth confirmed at the end by a clue, like in that episode of All in the Family, or it could just stay ambiguous and we could not know. Either of those could be interesting. As it is, there's no subjectivity. We know that Marguerite is the one telling the truth, so it's not even the Rashomon effect. And in truth, this movie could be chopped down. It could be about 90 minutes long, because we only need the third segment. We get all the information we need there. We see that Carouge is proud. We see that Degree is kind of out of touch with reality and just, quite frankly, a horrible person. We don't need the first hour of this film. So the first chunk is filler to pad out the runtime, I guess, or just he want, or Ridley Scott just wanted to hammer on this point of these two characters not being in touch with reality or having skewered morality that he decided to just uh, hit that hammer, hit that nail really, really hard. Hit that hammer really hard? Oh boy. Now, uh, I'd like to get to my second point, which is about the, uh, how the film treats the historic, its uh, source material, these uh, historical events of one of the last judicial duels in France. Now, despite the fact that the movie got a lot of things uh, right, there's a lot of interesting little tidbits in there that are correct, which is always nice to see, but there's a lot of the big stuff that is, I think, willfully wrong. It's been tweaked to fit the narrative, which I don't think that that's right. I think that a film should... It should change to suit the facts, not the other way around. And uh, I'm, it, these details aren't anything about armor or something, that's not what I do here. So number two. Um, this one is a bit tricky because the uh, real story did happen so long ago, it's kind of hard to determine what these people's personalities were really like but there are larger chunks of this that seem pretty undeniable. So, as far as characterization goes, while there seems to be some evidence supporting that uh, the idea that the depiction of Carouge is very temperamental, the contemporary sources that I found, and I spend probably an unhealthy amount of time looking for them, mostly talked about his bravery in combat, which, I mean, it doesn't tell us anything about his temper, so the, as far as how it depicts characterization, the movie could be perfectly correct. We, I just don't know. In spite of what I just said, The Last Duel does lean on having a very bleak depiction of Carouge. Um, it depicts, the, the movie depicts the central marriage of Carouge to Marguerite as, uh, Marguerite as uh, essentially unhappy. 
And at the end, uh, they want to assure us that he died a few years later in the crusade and she lived another 30 years and never remarried. Um, but uh, from what I could tell, it's not known for sure how much longer Marguerite lived. Um, and not everyone thought she was innocent. So some historians claim that um, she died in shame in a convent or something, but it's pretty hard to confirm that. It could just be bias. Personally, I think she was innocent, but... Anyways, uh, this much does seem certain. Carouge did not die a few years later, as the film suggests. Um, he died 10 years later, in 1396, after having two more children with Marguerite, and getting quite a lot of benefit from his victory in the duel. Uh, in total, their marriage was 16 years long. Most of it after the duel took place. So that's a complete misrepresentation on the part of the film. They want to cap things off nicely and assure us that everything was fine and all of that, and it's just, it's just not what happened. And we even only see one child at the end, when in fact there should have been three. And by simply omitting a few things, the film paints Marguerite as a definite heroine, um, trod upon by both of the men in the story. While that seems reasonable in the case of Jacques Degree, I mean, uh, the guy was accused of her, but as far as Carouge goes, it, that's not very cut and drift. That's the filmmakers making assumptions. And while we could depict him as the movie did, we also could imagine that he was a perfectly honorable man defending his wife's virtue. Uh, we could even imagine that maybe Degree was actually innocent and this was some kind of horrible scam on their part. And there's a lot of ways to spin this. However, I don't agree with that last um, idea of mine because the movie, as far as anything, if they did nothing else, they definitely ignored the notes left behind by the lawyer of Jacques Degree, a man named Jean Le Coq, Coq as in rooster, who's so he was literally John the Rooster. Um, he doubted his client's uh, innocence and claimed that uh, Marguerite, he, wit he was an eyewitness to the duel as well, which makes his account really valuable. Uh, he claims that Marguerite was not allowed to witness the duel. The king, who was there, um, didn't allow it for some reason. Uh, though Lecoq does claim that she offered some words of encouragement to Carouge before being uh, removed, before all the bloodshed started, and uh, they certainly didn't go with that in the movie. Now, I will give the film props for having Marguerite have conflicts with the female characters as well, but even the way that was done kind of annoys me because... The way Marguerite was depicted, it often she often feels too modern for my tastes. Um, particularly when she gives the speech to Carouge saying that God won't decide the victor, it'll be uh, decided by whichever old man tires the fastest. And it's a great line, but it's very dismissive of religion, and religion was pretty important to people back then. Like, even if um, this would be like me making a movie about, I don't know, the 11th century Japan or something and not talking about their religious beliefs of the time. It doesn't matter that I don't believe in that particular religion, but they did, and I'm making a movie about that period, so uh, why omit that? It's to appeal to modern sensibilities and make her feel like the wave of the future. We'll it, we will identify with that character because she feels modern and not really with anyone else, and I, I, I don't like when a movie does that. She's always framed as righteous by the movie. I feel like the goalposts shift depending on what other people are saying to always make her be in the right or something. So when she wants to tell the truth, everyone is kind of working against that. Carouge is acting as though the damage was done to him, and he doesn't seem to care about uh, her at all. He doesn't uh, commend her at all. He's just acting like, this was done to me. Which, to be fair, maybe he did, who knows. Um, but also, Carouge's mother is telling her, to, is telling Marguerite, uh, don't talk about it, you know, this happened to me too, and it'll do no good to, to muddy this up, so just put your head in the sand and forget about it. Now, 
Uh, well, th that's fine. The problem for me is that, like I said, goalpost shifting. Later, Carouge, the night before the duel, I think, yeah, the night before the duel, uh, he comes to his wife, and she's had her baby now, and he's saying, you know, um, you're very brave coming forward. Suddenly he's commending her bravery, and I was thinking, oh, like, maybe these characters are going to come uh, closer together now. But then suddenly Marguerite is saying, maybe I shouldn't have said anything, and maybe this was all a horrible mistake, <laughs> like... Suddenly she's saying the same thing that Carouge's mother said earlier. They're moving the goalposts, uh, in my opinion, so that she's always, um... You know, she's always uh, cutting to the truth with people and getting the last word in and that sort of thing. And I, I didn't like it. I would prefer some consistency. I realized that in real life, our points of view can change and all that. But I, this was, for, in my mind, this was too conveniently always having Marguerite be on the right. And I didn't appreciate it. Um... Anyway, um, I wrote in the original script that I don't hate this movie or something, but I've had time to think about it, and I'm not a big fan. Anyway, what really annoys me is that a lot of people, okay, may maybe not that many, could watch this and think that it's 100% factual when it's not. It's uh, quite far from the truth in very many surprising ways. Um, and most of all, someone who does treat this as fact is going to come away from it thinking that women were completely downtrodden uh, in 14th century France. Which, the evidence just paints a more nuanced picture than that. And I get that, I totally get that a lot of people are going to like this messaging, uh, that it gives this woman, Marguerite, a voice. In fact, I think every, I chose that phrase because I think every article I read um, praising this movie used that phrase, that it gives Marguerite a voice. And I get that, but my problem with it is that Marguerite wasn't without voice in her own time. Sure, her voice only mattered if her husband backed her up, but he did. She won the case much to the chagrin of many other historians. So, her voice was limited, but it was there. She was exonerated as far as the case went, so... So, saying that this movie gives her a voice, misleading. She was given a voice in her time, so... Mm, no. I'd like to finish this with a quote from Hannah Skoda, um, from an article that uh, she participated in for the Smithsonian Magazine, that I think pretty much sums up my feeling on this movie and uh, bending history to suit our, to appeal to modern sensibilities. Quote, It's all too tempting to talk about the Middle Ages as this horrible, misogynist, patriarchal, oppressive society as a way of even implicitly just saying, look how far we've come. Whereas to complicate what things looked like in the 14th century complicates what we're doing now. Anyway, in spite of this being a historical film, and in spite of all the research I did, I guess I can still say that this is mostly just my opinion. But let me know yours in the comments, um, press all the buttons, and I'll see you next time.